Continuing on with our discussion about formation cards and what happens when you draw them, we're next going to address the electronic war uh, warfare card. Your scenario can tell you whether or not a electronic warfare card is going to be included in your formation deck and whether or not one side or the other might have an advantage when it comes to electronic warfare. Let's say for our purposes in this example that there is an electronic warfare card in the deck and the NATO side has the advantage. When the card is drawn, you're going to roll 1d6. If the result is a 1 to 3, the NATO player gets to play the card. If it's a 4 to 6, the Warsaw Pact player gets to play the card, but this roll does get modified by the advantage. A negative one modifier is applied to the roll if NATO has the advantage and a plus one if Warsaw has the advantage. So let's say in our example that the card's drawn and a four is rolled on the result. In this case, normally the Warsaw Pact would get control of the card, but remember NATO has the advantage, which means a negative one is applied, making this result actually a three, meaning that NATO gets to control the card. The player who wins the card gets to place the marker on an enemy HQ unit that's on the map or in the holding box. So let's say our NATO player takes the electronic warfare marker and places it on this HQ. There's a number of results that happen from this. One of the biggest being that when this formation is activated, all units of that HQ's formation must roll to remain in command, no matter if they're in command range normally or not. So these units that are adjacent to the HQ would have to roll for command, even though normally they would be in range. However, units that are normally considered automatically in command, like if they're in a uh, stack with the HQ or with a leader, they still are automatically going to be considered in command. Also, disrupted units will receive a plus one penalty when rallying, and no unit from that formation may participate in off-board or on-board uh, indirect fire missions, simulating the fact that they are being jammed. There is a specific way that this marker is going to be removed. When it's on its full electronic warfare side, during the marker removal phase, the HQ will take and make a morale check. If they pass the morale check, then the marker is flipped over to its reducing side and on any following marker removal phase, any electronic warfare reducing counters are automatically removed.